There is no policy too pernicious, well, again, to ill conceived. No whack job on that, the right who's doing it. No, no, I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that if you have that R next to your name, there is no level of ethical misconduct. There is nothing uh, that will bring about condemnation. And that is a function of the lack of, these, of competitive elections and the collapse of the middle of American life. And so we have all these issues, not even in the business of persuasion anymore. Politics is a game of incitement. So it's about inciting the fringes, the 15%. That's how these health care bills get put on right. to votes when they have 13% approval, or you have 85, 90% of the country believes we should have common sense gun it's, regulation it's, and they can't get it done it's why, because of this. It's why Trump is perhaps pulling out of the Iran deal, or trying to, which even his own cabinet, again, the, the cabinet, the, the people who are still a little sane, they're for the Iran deal, they know it's a good deal, but he's trying to fulfill this campaign promise to these people who you are talking about. Hopefully he will be blocked. I mean, Mattis yeah. oh, has made clear where please. he stands on yeah. this. Others have made clear. But even if he does this, we still have Congress as a backstop. And you got to hope that the McCains, the Murkowskis, uh, uh, the, the Portman, some of the others who've stepped up will say, no, what? the deal is working. There were many people who were skeptical about this deal from the outset, and they had fair reason to be. But the, the deal is working far better than people thought. And I think if you poll some of those Republicans who were reluctant, oh, were reluctant about it, yeah. they, they support it. Even Corker would, I think, no. block him if he were to try to de certify this and go to the Congress for the vote. So I have some, I know I've been scolded a little bit for having confidence in Congress, but I got a little confidence <laughs> that these, some Sorry. of these Republicans, they stand. <laughs> Sorry for stand, being realistic here. Well, no, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not, I, you got to be optimistic about things because the only way, the only way we're going to change things, remember, he won the election. I didn't vote for him and I sent you deny either from the way you're talking. We have to figure out a way to beat him and we're not going to beat him by just riling ourselves up. We got to go back to Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Ohio and attract voters who did not vote for Hillary Clinton did not vote for well, Democrats and try to get them to vote for Democrats in 2018 and 2020. You got to have something for people to vote for. If you don't, we're not going to win just by saying he stinks and he sucks. If that's all it took, we'd have won, we'd have won that special race right. in Georgia. We need a message, we need a vision, and we got a campaign on you it in 18 and 20. Not that this is about Georgia. Sounds like we've got a candidate. You <laughs> said it about Georgia, but the problem in Georgia partially was that that candidate didn't talk about Donald Trump on the stump. So I don't I, think it's I as differ. simple as, as saying that criticizing him is not enough. I think it's about, you know, selecting stronger candidates. So we're uh, talking about... We're the on the same team. I just want to... I'm not on the team. So uh, you, you, I, don't like, I don't like Trump. You either. have written before that you had your reservation. <laughs> were you taking a little nap there when I went back to the panel? <laughs> were you meditating? You look like you were very blissed out there. For I had a, a lovely like... time during that. <laughs> 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 um, but you have had reservations, you have expressed reservations about voting itself. Where are you on voting now? Well, Bill, I think that <laughs> the dominant political parties have a real obligation, as Harold was just explaining, to present the voters, by which I mean human beings like me, real <laughs> vision, real possibilities, and to transcend the idea that they are merely managers of bureaucracies whose role it is to prevent us being, hmm, I suppose, uh, bludgeoned by lunatics, like the current one. So, uh, I, I feel that what we... But you would agree that it would be better if people had voted for Hillary Clinton, right? Yes, I, I, I wondered if Come you would on, ask me that. Come on, please. Well, look, we're, we're getting along so good. Do you so think, good. like... <laughs> If Hillary Clinton would not be pulling out of the Iran deal or the Paris climate deal or... It's really... You know I respect you and I admire you very much and I think you're a courageous man. One of the problems I have in instances such as this is that politics became so centralised, realistic opportunities weren't offered to ordinary people and when a candidate like Bernie Sanders emerged, he was not given the opportunities that he deserved. I never voted in my country. What do you mean he was not given the opportunities? There was a he, he was given every up. He ran well, in America. People voted voted for him, not as many as Hillary. I wonder why this occurs. Because I mean, you, you're talking now about the manipulation of boundaries and borders and, and the way that certain but, political okay. figures are managed towards positions.